Hi guys, let's just jump in. So there's a lot of report about why or how Tyler Skaggs uh, may have passed away, but everything's now coming to a halt based on the autopsy findings and a lot of the laboratory studies and tests such as drug screens are send out labs and they're saying roughly about 90 days it'll take to process. There's been a lot of media coverage showing and mourning uh, Tyler Skaggs. He was in the prime of his career. He was a baseball pitcher uh, and that recently passed away a few days ago uh, without potential cause. Um, a lot of support from Californians in my area and Angel fans. And uh, I'm just going to give you a mechanism or possibly my take on what may have happened and uh, educate you guys on uh, potential findings and maybe uh, do a post-op video explaining the uh, autopsy results when available. So I want to bring your attention to this slide. Sorry if it's not the most clearest, but if you squint your eyes, you can see that from 1900s, the main cause was most people were dying from infections. Now, as of 2010, and as we go further, and the same, same kind of evidence in 2019, it's almost a third of people are dying from heart disease. So if I were to make a prediction, I'm assuming something cardiac happened to Tyler that led to his sudden passing uh, as I don't feel that he had cancer and a well-built, highly tuned uh, athlete. Uh, the common condition that I'm talking about is called sudden cardiac arrest. It's basically a condition in the vessels of your heart that are fairly okay, but there's some electrical issue that happens, leading to uh, an arrhythmia or irregular conduction of electrical beats throughout the heart. And when this continues, it can cause a fatal paralysis of the beating of the heart. And I just want to show you this kind of screenshot. It's almost, it is very common. One in nine men will experience sudden cardiac death before age 70. So this could be a possible cause for Tyler. Coming from the same article, uh, it showed that most of the sudden cardiac deaths were actually on the follow-ups of people, uh, of these 5,200 men that were doing a follow-up. And men were more prevalent than women by almost a factor of 10x. So if you break down potential causes of sudden cardiac death, uh, looking at this pie chart, almost 75% is related to some form of coronary heart disease. Basically the narrowing and thickening of plaque of your blood flow vessels to your heart. Uh, but there are other rare conditions. You can have cardiomyopathies, basically structural issues that affect the musculature of the heart. Uh, and then the other one that I'm trying to talk about, which is called arrhythmias. You could have an inherent electrical issue going on in the heart, and that, that's very rare. They're accounting for about 2% of that. But another big uh, common process is valvular heart disease. There's a lot of people that have structural issues inherently or, or congenitally they're born with, but as they pursue more physical activity or as they age, then they start having problems with breathing and then later you find a diagnosis of cardiac issues. So this can give you a little indication of the cause of sudden cardiac death and maybe what I think is possibly happening to uh, Tyler as a possible cause of him uh, found immediately dead in his uh, hotel room. So let's talk about the anatomy of the heart. I'm talking about all this electrical activity, but how does this get conducted? So there's an SA node. It's a group of cells that basically signal an electrical beat at a high frequency. And then that frequency is getting relayed to what is called the AV node. Think of the AV node as something that dampens that high frequency. So say the SA node is beating at 200 beats a second. The AV node regulates it to about 150-ish. And then that signal goes down to what are called the Purkinje fibers or the Purkinje network fibers. And you can see that it travels down the middle of the heart and then it fans outward. And that's how an electrical activity conduction occurs. It starts from the top of the cells, moves to the middle, 
and then fans out. Once it hits around the Purkinje fibers, that's where you get your normal heart rate resting around 60 to 80 beats uh, a minute. So there could be a structural issue with this. Uh, we don't know the status of Tyler's heart, if he had congenital issues, but there's also structural issues that could occur with the valves of the heart. Uh, and if these are abnormal too, you can also develop um, arrhythmias uh, or electrical activity disturbances. So these are the two electrical activities that all docs hate to have in their patient because it usually leads to a code blue or cardiac arrest. So the first one is called uh, ventricular tachycardia and then the other one is called ventricular fibrillation. These are irregular electrical activities occurring at the ventricles or the lower part of the heart and you can see fibrillation it's basically a spike in wave patterns no real uh, pattern to it and then ventricular tachycardia is a very fast high uh, uh, conduction of electricity. The downside is, is even though you're getting current going through the muscles, the muscles are basically shaking and paralysis and they're not beating or moving blood uh, throughout the body and then eventually the body will start suffering from oxygen deprivation. I put this slide to basically explain the importance of electrolytes and how an abnormal electrolyte such as your sodium, your potassium, your calcium can cause electrolyte, I mean can cause electrical dysfunction in the heart leading to sudden cardiac death. So say if your sodium level is very high in a setting of uh, diarrhea, you're losing a lot of water. Uh, this can cause uh, electrolyte issues. If your potassium is very low, it can start altering what we call ST segments in the electrical activity of your heart, uh, and it can also lead to ventricular fibrillation. Um, elevated potassium, this is a way we kill prisoners when we put them to the death chamber, so it can stun the heart, causing it to go into cardiac arrest. And uh, same thing with calcium, I'll let you guys pause the video and look at it a little bit more detailed. But in short, what these segments are, these called ST segments or PR intervals or QT segments, these are intervals of the electrical activity waveform that goes through the heart that's being modulated in a negative way and can put a patient at risk for heart, heart attacks or cardiac death or arrhythmia. So the importance of this is if you were a baseball player and you're overly working uh, outside, you can become dehydrated. You'll definitely have sodium issues. If you're not having a balanced diet, uh, your potassium will plummet. If Tyler was taking some medication that modulates his uh, fluid intake, like such as a diuretic, like hydrochlorothiazide to help with blood pressure issues, he could also have lower potassium. So medications can also adjust electrolytes, uh, just the, the work that he does, sweating outside, a lot of physical activity, that can also impact electrolytes. And who knows, we don't know his electrolyte status, uh, and hopefully they can shed light if he did have an electrolyte imbalance that could have explained why he uh, passed away. All right, so this is another potential explanation of the, the way he may have passed away. Uh, the cause is called a pulmonary embolism. Usually you see this in people that, in case of Tyler's uh, position, are always in the plane, flying long distances, not moving a lot, and they have some form of stagnation. So in that stagnation, the blood is pooling in the calf muscles when they're in a seated position, and this puts you at risk for developing a condition called DVT. Basically, the clot then migrates from the, the calf up the veins into the heart and causes a massive blood clot in the pulmonary artery, causing huge stunning of the respiratory system, and it can lead to someone 
failing to oxygenate, losing their ability to breathe, and then putting stress on the heart and then having a heart attack. Like I said, there's a clot that develops in the lower calf area, specifically in the venous side, and a lot of it can be from someone just sitting there. Now, I don't know if Tyler had any trauma to the calf, because trauma can cause it, uh, pulling a blood, uh, and then you're more clot prone. Um, I don't know what type of medications he's on. There are certain meds that can cause the blood to become more thicker and more thrombotic, aka more developing of a clot. Uh, I don't know if he had any operations to the venous side uh, or stenting placed, but immobilization or basically someone being bed bound or long flights uh, are the big common causes for lower uh, uh, DVTs in healthy individuals and then followed by trauma. So here as the clot is developing in the lower part of the leg it does start moving upward towards the heart and lungs. Uh, the clot will then eventually enter the pulmonary artery and occluding or blocking off the flow of blood impacting the body to oxygenate and then what that does is it indirectly increases the pressure throughout the circulation of the heart. So as the clot is getting bigger in the pulmonary arteries you can see that the lower part which is called the tricuspid valve which is connected to the right ventricle in this big blue triangle that section of the heart gets very high in pressure and the tricuspid valve can start leaking and then you get backflow of the heart and essentially the right side of the heart stops contracting you get blood pooling down into the liver into the lower legs and essentially the patient can't oxygenate because the blood isn't moving from their legs to their lungs and then from their lungs into the heart and then from the heart throughout the body so here's what I'm talking about, the tricuspid valve. Basically it's a valve that is in between the right atrium, labeled RA, and the right ventricle, labeled RV. And what happens is blood flows through up into the heart uh, via the inferior vena cava, and also blood pools from the head down from the superior vena cava, it then links into the right atrium, then moves into the right ventricle up to the pulmonary artery. And that's where you get this clot. So if you think about plumbing and high pressure gradients, if you have a big clot at blocking the PA artery, you're going to have a lot of backflow. So I put these arrows down showing that blood is actually reversing flow. Uh, back into the right ventricle, back through the tricuspid valve, back into the right atrium, and then uh, you can see how someone can fail to oxygenate. So in general what I think is occurring and maybe my prediction on why Tyler Skaggs passed away so suddenly is he probably had sudden cardiac death um, it was probably from an arrhythmia and the arrhythmia was probably triggered either from a medication he was taking that modulated his electrolytes or he was dehydrated or overly worked, didn't drink enough fluids and his potassium sodium levels were out of whack and that caused him to go into a weird arrhythmia, uh, maybe VTAC or VFib and uh, essentially had a heart attack. I don't think he had massive cardiac disease. We'll learn if he had really bad coronaries or he has a genetic family history of bad coronary arteries uh, with the autopsy. So that'll be ruled out. Uh, hopefully they were able to get a blood sample to look at the electrolytes, but sometimes the electrolytes can change as the body starts to decompose and cells get further destroyed, causing an artificial change in the electrolytes. Um, and then uh, what they can do is uh, on postpartum they can evaluate the heart and look at the septal wall, the, the thickness of the walls, 
and they can tell you if you had any structural or congenital issues or valvular issues that Tyler probably never knew of uh, because he never had any issues um, with uh, physical activity. But as he aged, maybe the structural issue became so severe that it impacted his heart. And then the other potential cause that I'm, I'm probably thinking is most of these uh, baseball players are traveling left and right. Uh, they have so many games to play. They're in the air, sitting in planes, buses, and I feel that maybe he developed a DVT or a clot in the lower leg and it turned into a fatal pulmonary embolism causing him to have trouble with oxygenation. So this is a take from a medical doc. I'm just giving you my perspective. Uh, much respect to uh, Tyler uh, and his family. This is really sad that this happened to such a young man, especially almost in the, the peak of his career. Uh, and uh, my heart goes out to him and the family and uh, the Angels organization. Um, once again, if you guys like the content, the media, the coverage that I'm trying to uh, put out there in the world, smash a like button, subscribe, uh, give me some more comments if you want specific topics. Uh, but I think this video was kind of fun because it took a uh, the interest of sports, but also mash it up with medicine. Um, I'll be doing a couple more videos like this because I just think it's a, a fun for everybody to learn uh, medicine this way. Uh, once again, thanks for enjoying the vlog uh, and uh, have a great day.